Hey guys, Sneaky Snake here, Brothers in Arms, World of Warships, and today's video is our next installment into our community replay series, and this one is once again from Fatal Donuts. He's playing in his Tier 5 German battleship, the Kulnik, and he's playing some domination by himself on the map Solomon Islands. So, this is going to be one hell of a replay, and unfortunately, it will result in a losing effort, but uh, I think the title of this replay says it all. The amount of medals that he's going to receive in this game is incredible, especially when we get towards the latter part of the video, but I digress. This is going to be a very good battle in a very good Tier 5 battleship. So back in the day, way back a long time ago in World of Warships, you basically had the uh, the Congo, the Tier 5 Japanese battleship, well, it's more of a battle cruiser, I suppose, and the New York, and that was it. And with the German battleships that were released, it shifted the meta quite a bit. And even with all the arpeggio Congos, then the addition of the Texas, uh, I still think the Koenig is the best of all of the Tier 5 battleships. So you, basically speaking, you're not as fast as a Congo, but you're not as slow as a New York. You do have lower caliber weapons. However, uh, the reload on this thing is pretty darn good. It's only 24 seconds. And the penetration values on these 12-inch guns are also pretty good as well. Even in Tier 7 games, which this ship can see, you will still be able to do pretty decent damage on broadsides um, against any battleship at any range, really. And it has a pretty decent range of about 16 kilometers. It also has pretty decent AA when it has the fully upgraded hull. Obviously, in real life, the Koenig was uh, used by the Imperial German Navy in World War I, and it did not see service in World War II for obvious reasons. Uh, but in-game, of course, it has uh, the B-Hull, and it's pretty good AA. It's not bad. Obviously, he's going up against a Langley in this game, so he shouldn't really have too much issues shooting down planes as he's looking for his first shot here at the V-170, the Tier IV German destroyer. So he's heading over here to Objective Alpha. Um, on Domination, I personally like to go up towards the sea. However, if you do get the uh, crappy end of the draw and you spawn more towards what would be the western side of the map looking at it, um, then yeah, you kind of force down to go down here. However, most of the enemy team is going to make their way down here, so he's going to have his hands tied full here at the beginning of the game. Now, the Isakaze in front of him does pop a smoke screen, so he's going to take full advantage of that. Now, the thing about the Koenig is that it's finally the first German battleship on the line to have all of its guns mounted on the center line. So at the moment, he is uh, castrating 60% of his firepower just using his forward two guns, but it doesn't matter. Two of the four shells hit and gets a Citadel on the Emerald. Those British mid-tier light -like cruisers, you look at them the wrong way and they take Citadels. So he's going to continue to take advantage of the Isakaze smokescreen here. The Japanese smokescreens obviously last the least amount of all the nations in the game so far, but it's still good nonetheless. So a good play by the Isakaze. Very nice indeed. He's now looking for another shot here on the Emerald. Unfortunately, I don't think he recognized that he uh, did a hard turn to port right there, so his uh, forward two guns do miss. However, he is able to take care of the base, gets the assisted base capture, and you can see that the majority of the enemy fleet is coming down here. There's the Miyogi, the Emerald, a Nassau, an Omaha, there's a Nikolai coming down here as well, that OP Russian monster. And even though it's tier four, he'll have his hands full with that ship trying to take it out. So he has to be careful. He's looking now for the killing shot here on the Emerald. The shell's flying in. One penetrates just rear of the second funnel. Gets another Citadel, number two. First blood secured. 14,000 damage done. Very, very good stuff. Now that Emerald, however, even though he died, did manage to lay down a wide spread of torpedoes. And unfortunately, the Omaha and the Furotaka are about to run right into them. So, uh, yeah, there's all these torpedoes coming in. And it was something that I didn't catch on, actually, when I first watched the replay, is his two forward guns miss the wicks. Both torpedo salvos slam home, and he picks up four medals after he croaked it. And uh, right there, Donuts is able to pick up his second kill of the game, gets a close quarters expert. So he's already picked up two of them as he swings the rest of his guns to bear on the enemy Miyogi. So a very, very crazy start here to the beginning of this game. Multiple enemy ships down here and friendlies have been taken out by just swarms of torpedoes and gunfire. So it's uh, this is why I like the lower tiers for battleship gameplay, to be honest, and even the mid tiers too, because you get a lot more, uh, or I should say, you get a lot less passive gameplay down here. And this is certainly some good cinematic stuff if you're into that sort of thing. So about 20,000 damage done. The score is 254 to 367 at this point. The enemy team has captured Objective Charlie. His team has captured Objective Alpha, excuse me, and Bravo is still being contested. Now, the Koenig, one thing about it, now I don't know for sure if he has a secondary build, but these guns can reach out to over 6 kilometers, which, quite frankly, for mid-tier gameplay is fantastic. 
on your battleships, and he has started a couple of fires. Uh, and I believe it was the Nassau that was trying to turn back away from him. Manages 6,300 damage done on the enemy Miyogi there with his two forward guns. And as you can see here, he sets yet another fire with his secondaries as he continues to wreck in the damage up to 34. And another fire set. These German secondaries are really good. Obviously, the high tiers like Bismarck, Friedrich the Grosse, and Grosse Kurfürst are known for him. But they're still getting the job done here on the Koenig. Continues to pelt more broadsides into this Miyogi. Now, you can see here, this is probably the only bad part about these guns is that if you were on something like a Texas or a New York or a Congo, chances are you probably would have citadeled that Miyogi at least once and done much more damage. These 12-inch guns are certainly the definition of um, dealing damage in short spurts, but not necessarily outright nuking stuff. Either way, he continues to shoot more of his guns. Unfortunately, he was surprised by the Langley's torpedo planes who came over, and one of the downsides about the Koenig is that it has a very pathetic torpedo belt. And he takes two torpedoes, both to the rear, and they do about 7,000 damage, knocks out the steering gear, puts flooding into the rear of his ship, so he's got to be using his damage control and his repair, which he certainly does. He does, however, uh, he did pick up the kill on the Miyogi, so now he's up to three kills and about 60,000 damage, but at this point, even with a tier three and a four battleship down there, Doing it in a 2v1 is still a very hard prospect. So he's going to turn away since his rear turrets were already pointed to his port side. He's just going to, uh, excuse me, he's just going to swing around. He's going to use his rear turrets to do more of the damage. And it is very uh, similar to the higher tier German cruisers where you have a lot of your firepower to the rear like Nuremberg and Rune. So it makes kiting away certainly a staple of not just the cruiser but also the battleship gameplay as well. So, so far, his team is actually getting their butts absolutely whooped. 186 to 467. The enemy team is about to capture Objective Bravo. And um, there's also going to be quite a few enemy ships that will be moving through the middle channel there on the 5-6 line and also coming down from Objective Charlie. So, uh, Donuts is certainly not even close to being out of the woods yet. So, he's going to continue to fire his rear turrets here at the Nassau. One great thing about the Koenig is that these guns are super accurate. So, finding the weak spots and hitting good salvos is certainly something that this ship excels at, but um, at this point he just has to continue to go back. They gotta try to get on one of the caps, so he's definitely going to be heading back towards Objective Bravo. More shells flying in on the Nassau, gets about 2,000 damage there. He's uh, also looking for shots here on the Nikolai too, at least giving pause and taking a look-see to see where he is at. The Nikolai, however, is dealing with his two friendly battleships that are just off his starboard rear quarter, so um, he's figures, okay, I can leave my teammates to take care of that stuff. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. We'll check back on that in a little bit. At this point, an Iwaki Alpha. Wow, that's a blast from the past. That ship, if I'm not mistaken, please correct me, uh, was definitely part of the beta and I believe was an Alpha uh, test reward because it's Iwaki Alpha. So this thing has been around for quite some time. So seeing one of those ships is indeed very, very rare. And he's going to go forward and try to get a close range torpedo attack. Donuts continues to shoot more shells at this Iwaki Alpha. Unfortunately, most of the shells that are hitting him are over penetrating. And now more Langley torpedo bombers are incoming on his position. But like I said, the AA on the Koenig, at least fully upgraded, is actually pretty well. And his secondaries are opening up indeed. Um, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue for him to get out of this sticky situation. He continues to shoot more. A shell just impacts behind the third funnel on the Alpha. Picks up his fourth kill of the game with yet another Citadel, the third one of the game. He pulls in hard, hard to port to get away from the enemy torpedo attack. He managed to shoot down the entire squadron, and now his AA is opening up on the torpedo planes that are off to his rear as he continues to turn to his port side. Obviously, the Iwaki Alpha has pretty good torpedoes, so he has to continue to turn, and it just so happens that he's going to squeeze himself through just another little gap once again, so very good dodge in there by Fatal Donuts. His AA continues to open up. He shot down 17 planes thus far. There's only one more torpedo bomber to take care of, and he certainly does for plane number 18. So very, very good stuff right there. Turning away from the torpedo planes, not presenting yourself a good target, making them fly around to get to a good sight and a good spot. And he certainly was able to do that. So very good there by Fatal Donuts. Unfortunately, though, the scores continue to go in the favor of the enemy. 299 to 585. They've lost yet another friendly ship. It's only him and two other battleships, of course, along with the aircraft carrier that's over in J-10. But uh, that Nikolai over there is doing pretty good work on his friendly battleship. So at this point, he has a one versus three. He's got a Wyoming, and then he's got a New York and an Omaha off to his starboard side. So we'll see how Donuts is able to handle it. He still has two charges on his... Um, 
his repair consumable coming up, so he certainly can still tank. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention about the Koenig is that, uh, very similar to all the German battleships on the line, quite frankly, it has extremely good armor protection, and while it doesn't have the raw thickness in the side of the armor, it has very good barbettes, and it seems to have that spaced armor where shells just do not do those ridiculous salvos. Citadeling one of these things is all but impossible, to be honest with you. Donuts now continues to turn to port because, of course, when there's only one plane that needs to be shot down, he's able to get it off before um, his torpedo off, that is, before his AA takes care of it. Plane number 19. I suppose that Langley should probably stop shooting at him. He gets his Ford guns out here at the Wyoming, gets a pretty decent salvo in. The Wyoming's bow armor is very pedestrian. I think it's like 14 or 15 millimeters, so you can even have these 12-inch guns go right through the front without too much of an issue. However, unfortunately for Donuts, he's got the Omaha now coming in on a charge, and he's trying to get around the island to get out of the way of the New York's guns. The New York does have a much longer reload, and he successfully does so. So while he's advancing now towards the Wyoming, he's going to swing his guns in towards the Omaha and see what he can do. And here is going to be probably another example of where these 12 inch guns can sometimes screw you over he's got a full broadside on this Omaha he's gonna have a couple shells go right through the front and he doesn't get a Citadel one over pen right there looking for his forward guns now he aims a little bit too far to uh, the left side on his screen and now all of a sudden he's about to pull an Otzer and run a grab so he's got to be very careful so he's going to cut the power to the engines immediately and start swinging a ship around to the uh, starboard side picks up the Confederate his third medal of the game so very good stuff right there and uh, he's, the guns are already reloaded, so he's now looking for a full broadside here on this Omaha. Luckily for him, the island does not catch him up too bad, and he's able to bounce off slightly and get out of dodge. So very, very lucky for Dunnis here. He's now looking for the kill shot here on the Omaha, and like I said, if this was a New York right here, chances are when Dunnis fires off the Savo, he would absolutely eradicate him with the guns. But unfortunately, he's not going to be able to do so as he swings his attention back to the Omaha. A full broadside is out, and unfortunately, he only gets three overpens and two shells that manage to do a little bit of penetrating damage puts the ship at 964 health his secondaries continue to open up and at this point the game's lost might as well go for the ram secondaries right before he rams manages to set the wyoming on fire picks up high caliber and crack it and immediately he gets the close quarters and the double strike the medals <laughs> donuts holy crap man that was some epic stuff unfortunately it's going to end up as a defeat here but what a performance by fatal donuts here in the tier 5 german battleship the Koenig. Alrighty guys, taking a look now at the post-battle results, 320,000 credits received, just over 3,000 total XP earned, Confederate, Double Strike, two close quarters experts, First Blood, Kraken Unleashed, High Caliber, the bling is real. 138,000 damage done off of three citadels and 37 target hits. 19 planes shot down from the Langley. Six enemy ships sent to the bottom of the ocean. 78 target hits with his secondaries and one assisted base capture. Taking a look at the team score, 1,198 base XP. He came, if he was on the enemy team, in third place. So a very, very awesome performance by Donuts here in his Koenig. So with that being said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this replay. Please consider giving the video a like, commenting on it, even giving us a subscription. All of it is fine and dandy. With that being said, the Sneaky Snake here for Brothers in Arms World of Warships signing off. Guys, have a great day.